That concludes my presentation. Thanks a lot for your um, yeah, time. And we can talk in the hallway if there are any questions. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we wanted to talk about various uh, scalability issues related to a map block. And first, I wanted to point out that there's really many different things people mean when they mention MMAP log performance. So the first level of that is uh, CPU level events like you know, cache line contention when you actually have to get to the MMAP log. And that's things you would see, for example, if you have a lot of page faults uh, taking the MMAP log for read and they just each have to contend on that uh, cache line that holds the MMAP lock. And uh, you know, that's one of the aspects of performance that people see with uh, MMAP lock. The second level of performance issue that people see is completely different. It's uh, when they have a process with many threads and these threads uh, try to have different operations within that process. Big M maps, big M on maps, uh, page faults that actually hit disk, things like that. And uh, these operations by different threads in the same process end up blocking on each other. Usually when they do that, it's actually uh, false conflicts. It's things that really could process in parallel that stretch, you know, each work on their little part of the address space in that process, but the kernel doesn't know that and uh, serializes things on the MMAP block, and you end up with threads blocking potentially for long periods of time if you have big M maps, big M on maps, slow disks uh, that you hit with page faults. The third type of issues that people are seeing is if you have things that access an external process address space, usually through POC files. Usually it's like system monitoring software. Maybe you just want to run PS and know what are the, the common line to that process. And you know that common line is stored in, in the memory map of that process. And um, you can also end up blocking an MMAP SEM in that way. And your monitoring process uh, sometimes might be running at a fairly low priority. And while it holds that MMAP lock, it might be blocking your, uh, your server software you know, that, that it's supposed to monitor. Um, and that's the sort of issues that, that have been seen both at, you know, at Google, Facebook, like everyone's hitting that and having various sorts of dirty workarounds for it, but we're seeing this kind of issues. Um, so there's really different aspects of MMAP lock performance that different people are seeing and care about, and it, it, it no real unified view of what it means to say, you know, MMAP log performance. Um, we had a big discussion about that three years ago. Um, that's four years ago, that's five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> can't have a little stuff without MSM. <laughs> right. Well, I think there was a really big one uh, in Puerto Rico 2019, and we, we talked about, uh, at that time, the, the main approach that was being considered was SPF, that was uh, Lawrence Patchett. Um, looking after that, I started working on range looking, really. So I was trying to address the issue of um, false conflicts within a single process. And I, I'm not going to go very deep on that. I just want to mention the, the really broad line. So I, I kind of split the MMAP log in two levels, one that I called uh, VMA log that was just protecting uh, data structures like the, 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 the arbitrary and a few, a few counters that are per process and a few things like that. And that would only be taken for really short periods of time. And then 
uh, if, if you, for things that actually need to block, for things that might be held for a longer period of time, um, they would have to be range aware and uh, to, to know exactly which range, they, which range of memory they, they are reserving for read or write. Um, I was able to get that working and in a way that you can really only, that you really only, that you can convert incrementally one code path at a time. And I, it was experimental. I only did uh, MMAP, MNMAP, and page faults. The issue with that was the cost of page faults because uh, for every page fault, you would get the cost of updating that shared data structure that says which ones you are, are currently locked for, uh, for read. And that data structure update was expensive, and I kind of left it at that for you know for now I haven't really pursued it any f further. Um, so then you know we we after that I kind of started looking at SPF again, which I will talk about uh, later. SPF is one of the approaches that might be interesting because they help in the first two levels of uh, performance issue that people care about. Uh, it can help both in the, the issue of um, uh, bouncing the cache line that holds the, the MMAP log, because if you don't take it at all for page faults, then you won't bounce that, that cache line. And it can help in avoiding blocking in uh, in some cases, if the blocking was caused by page faults that, that held that log for a long time. Yes? Is there nothing else um, that can bury the cache line? I'm wondering, like, I, I like the idea of uh, not having to, to deal with the reader costs of, of cache lines, right? Because you, you end up burning it, as you're saying, like, with RCU, that, that doesn't happen anymore, right? But I'm just wondering, like, is that really such a big problem because from my angle, I've always seen the, the, the biggest problem in MAPSEM with um, multi-threaded applications. Um, yes. And wondering if there aren't any, in the, in, the, in, the, in the fault path, there aren't any other things that are dirting the cache line anyway. So, so, so you get rid of one problem, but you still, you still have the same problem because other data is still being written. Um. I have not seen that. I have seen that I was able to get some performance improvements if you just do a bunch of page faults on a system with uh, with uh, multiple sockets uh, with SPF. So generally, I will agree with you that I think the more interesting case is uh, multi multi thread processes and uh, doing many things within the same process and actually blocking. Um, but what I will say is that when you do something like that and you try to benchmark it, a lot of uh, the benchmarks we have in MM tests, they really hit a lot more of the how much cache line contention do we have than you know the thing we're actually interested about. But, all right, so that's, that was just the kind of general introduction I wanted to make, but after that, I'm just going to leave it to you, Liam. Hello? Yeah. Is this on? Yeah. Okay. So, so the other, uh, well, uh, parallel approach that was taken was was looking at uh, a specific uh, data structure to handle uh, the VMAs uh, on its own. Uh, so uh, Matthew and I have been working on this for for a while now, uh, and it's pretty close to to merge. Um, so it's at the maple tree. Um, most people probably have heard of it or at least seen it on the mailing lists. Uh, it's a uh, B tree variant. Um, it's uh, this this slide kind of outlines uh, what you could, how you could think about it. Uh, it's it's a B yeah. It's uh, its biggest difference uh, from all the implementations uh, is that it uh, it's top down versus bottom up splitting. Uh, and inserts are more involved because you can have, when you insert one thing, you could ha be inserting just one thing or you could be overwriting a portion of one thing. So you could have one to three inserts. Um, so 
uh, things get a bit complicated internally. Uh, so what's nice about it is that I'm taking the complications out of the MM into the data structure. And the data structure is useful other places. Uh, we already have someone else trying to use this and, and find it very interesting, Dave Howells. He's maybe in this room, maybe not. Oh, he's in the file system track. Um, so we're trying to make it, this data structure, just to be a, a simple interface. Uh, users just want to store their data. And, and we find a lot of places in the kernel people are using uh, either the RB tree with things bolted on to speed it up, uh, <laughs> which is in the MM. Um, or they use uh, the interval tree uh, for non-overlapping ranges. And they use those because there really isn't a better alternative. Um, and, and, or they use linked lists, so let's, let's not do that, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> or both, yes. So, so this, so this uh, the maple tree is killing uh, the RB tree usage for VMAs and the link list usage and the VMA cache. Uh, and we're currently uh, pretty much the same performance across the board. Uh, where we want to go is to get to using the RCU part of this tree uh, so we can use, use it to use, do lockless lookups. Uh, basically, the idea would be that we try to, um, well, we look up without a lock. If there's any one pending to change what you're looking at, then you restart from the top. Uh, we're trying to figure out exactly what that looks like for all the different locks and all the different ways that, that things kind of get complicated uh, down in the lower level, uh, pre-allocations because of uh, FS reclaim and all, all the wonderful world of actually that came up in previous talks. Um, so so it's, it's interesting that everyone's kind of hitting the same problems and, and no one really has a, a great answer. Uh, and I, I think the best answer would be to look for better data structures, to be honest. Um, so this is, this is our, our data structure, and, and I think Matthew has a few slides about the, uh, the locking problems and how messy they do get uh, that he can share uh, for this RCU future, if you want to come up. Miracle it works. All right. Um, yeah, so just, just to elaborate on what Liam's saying, um, what, what we're proposing for the next merge window, what Andrew is working hard to get merged in and keep it in, is um, the maple tree for storing VMAs. But we're not using any of the RCU functionality. Everything is still being protected by, by, by the MMAP SAM. So everything that we've, we're talking about with, in terms of RCU is future work, future development. We haven't even finished writing the code yet. I mean, we, we had a couple of goes at it. but. There's, there, there, there's some problems, and it's a, it's a, it's a big win. Well, it's not, it's not a big win. It's a win in terms of code complexity, because we're moving code complexity out of the MM. Like, we're getting rid of the VMA cache. We're getting rid of the doubly linked list to connect all the VMAs together in a nice long chain. And we're getting rid of the RB tray, or at least the, the usage of the RB tray there. <laughs> right. um, so what I wanted to talk about, about was the, 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 the future of, you know, how, how do we see this going forward. Um, so what, 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 I, what, I, what I drew up quickly um, during the last talk, th this is how a read fault works today. Right? And, and I, I, I took x86 as the example, because why not? Um, so in the x86 do user address fault function, we take the mmap read lock, and we then we call find VMA. And so the whole way, the whole way after this, we're, we're we're expecting the VMA to stay stable, because we're holding the MMAP read lock, and if you if you're going to change a VMA, you have to take the MMAP write lock, and so we're, we're guaranteed it will stay stable. And we pass the VMA down, and the problematic bit is when we get into double underscore handle MM fault, and we call P4D alloc. PUD alloc and PMD alloc. And I'm really glad that David went first because he's, he did a fantastic job with those slides explaining what all these acronyms mean. Um, but the problem from an RCU point of view is that those use uh, GFP kernel allocation. 
So we might end up doing page reclaim, we might end up sleeping, waiting on page right back to happen, and memories become available, and it is all a giant mess because obviously you can't sleep while you're holding, while you're holding the RCU read lock. Um, it's actually okay after that. Those are the only, that, that's the only bit which is really causing me heartburn right now is that we've got these three GFP kernel allocations. Um, and to add insult to injury, most of the time you don't even do them because they already exist. But of course the possibility is that you've never touched anything in this P4D before and you've got to allocate all three levels. So, Paul, I'm so glad you're in the audience. <laughs> Um, I, I think there is another mic floating around. Um, I, I proposed a couple of ideas to Paul, and I, 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 he then asked me some trenchant questions, and, and, and I didn't quite get around to answering them. Um, one, one question is, uh, if you had something like SRCU that did not have the read side full memory barriers, would that make things easier? Oh, I wish Laurent was here, because... Um, Somebody can find him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It's only, you know, 10, 11 o'clock there. Right? Well, no, it's, 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 it's nine hours difference. It's, yeah, it's, it's 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah, I still be yeah, awake. Okay, all right. Well, anyway, so um, SRCU has been tried for this before, or, or for SPF before. There, there was an SRCU variant of it, and there were performance problems. Now, this was a few years ago, so maybe those performance problems are now fixed. Performance problems are there would be there already. The difference is that I might have a way of uh, letting people choose between having the read side be slow, which is the current choice you get, period, um, and having the right side be, you know, the, the grace periods be a little more contorted, which, um, but I would want to use it before I did that. So my question is, if you have something like SRCU where you have to have the SRCU struct, um, and uh, but there was a way of doing it so that I mean you're going to have probably a preempt enable in there, okay, in the read side. So you're going to have some tests, uh, maybe in both of them, maybe not. I don't know. I'd have to go through it. Uh, but there would not be a full memory barrier. If you had that, would that would that get you to the point where you could just throw the critical section around the whole mess and not worry about it? And that's actually to both of you, both uh, Matthew and Mich Michelle, for that matter. I don't know. I, 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 I think more, more thought probably required. I mean, my, my instincts say that actually that should be fine. But um, I, I, I think recent bugs for me have indicated that I do not understand memory barriers in any functional manner. Nobody does. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I think there are cases right now where you would hold the uh, MAP read lock for a long time. So I mean, in this case, it might be fine, but the question is, like, w how long could the grace period be then? Well, that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's your SRCU struct. <laughs> no, seriously, that's, that's, the, that's the reason that the SRCU has the multiple things is uh, uh, if with normal RCU, if anybody anywhere in the kernel decides they want to hang out in the read side for 100 milliseconds, that affects everybody, all right? Uh, the thing about SRC, I mean, you could even have one per process if you wanted to, okay? Well, that's uh, yeah, we could embed it into the MMAPS uh, MMAP struct. Yeah, I mean, MMAPS struct needs in some extra size, right? I mean, it's too, too lightweight. We need yeah, to it's it's only like two it. kilobytes or something, I yeah. mean, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you, or you could just have a global one for all of them, depending on, you know, what the readers were doing, right? I mean, you know, it's, uh, I mean, if you're having trouble allocating one, you're probably having trouble allocating the other. It's not clear having separate is useful, but, you know, I don't know the code. Who knows? We don't want to start at the fault. Uh, most faults will be very fast, uh, but, you know, there's always going to be once in a while that, you know, hits the allocation cases or hits a slow disk. And so most faults, you know, take, you know, microseconds, and then once in a while there's one that takes 100 milliseconds, and you don't know at the start of the faults which one is going to be. Right, but um, are, is it the case that processes have different backing stores? In other words, if uh, one process is having problems allocating or all the other processes, or is there something with C groups and, 
namespaces and something like that that means that some might be fast, some might be slow. Michelle's nodding his head, but I'm not sure which way he's answering. <laughs> yeah, so uh, essentially you can end up in both um, MCG reclaim and the global reclaim, so no luck there. Okay, so, so we would want to have for process modes is what you're saying? Per well, mm struct. Well, in, and in FS reclaim, wouldn't we have a variable time based on which FS reclaim we're going into? Say it again. I was just too busy not screaming. <laughs> so the the FS reclaim is really a wild card in itself, right? Like we don't know how long that would take. So it if we end up in FS reclaim, all bets are off that we're going to make the deadline. So actually, I mean, I've got a room full of MM people here who can, who can shout at me that I'm stupid and wrong. Uh, my inclination is actually to make GFP kernel explicit rather than implicit to all these P4D, PUD, and PMD alloc cases. And in this path, at least the first time through, we make them GFP no wait, and we actually handle the, 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 the failure to immediately allocate memory. Um, and the, so the, 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 the intent is that the quick path just does it under us to you. And, you know, the quick path is we already have these things, we, we already have these levels of the page table in place, or we can allocate them immediately, and the pages are in cache. What I haven't shown here, because, you know, slide's full, is that format map pages can fail. It can say, well, the page you've asked for is not in the page cache, or, yeah, the page, page you've asked for is in the page cache, but we're going to have to run read ahead in order to fetch the next batch of pages. So, yeah, you can have that page, but you, you're still going to have to drop the lock and, and do I.O. Um, and, and so it, it will return a pet fault flag retry or whatever it is all the way back up. And in that case, we would take the MMAP read lock again, right? We can fall into the slow path. That's fine. As long as, as, long as you know, the 99% cases, we do the whole thing under our CU read lock and never touch it. You know, we, we're already winning, right? So, so who, 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 who's with me on actually, actually adding a GFP flag to these three levels of page table allocation? That would be a lot of code to change. Less than you'd think. Yeah. We really don't allocate page tables in that many places. Pretty oh, and, yeah. and, 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 and you'll like this. That makes vmalloc able to operate with not GFP kernel flags. Yeah, I mean, uh, this hasn't <laughs> been a technical problem, I believe. That was mostly that uh, you've got those um, P alloc functions for all architectures. So we would have to touch the, a lot of architect architecture code. Um, have, have you seen how big my folio patch sets have been? Yeah, that's what I'm not looking so, at. You, you know, you, <laughs> you're, you're, you're not scaring me here, Michael. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to not scare you because uh, you are hard to get scared, but all the people who would have to look at a code and essentially be aware of all those subtleties that might be there, like, I don't know, those continuous page tables in, in uh, our architecture and and whatnot. So uh, I don't think that's a huge technical problem rather than do a lot of work because for some reason this would be really, really helpful to have from the very beginning, but that's not the case. Do you, do you even need a GFP flag or can you just go to the slow path um, whenever there is not a PMD already there? Because I, I, I worry about the case where you have like a big virtual mapping and you start faulting everything like sequentially and with GFP no way you never go into reclaim right so you could pretty quickly deplete all available memory without being forced into reclaim but because the PMD is mostly going to be there right it's just the first hit that has to allocate it and then all the subsequent ones wouldn't have to fall back yes yeah, so, so if you're doing if you're doing the GFP no way it, it and you would have to reclaim you just fail and the, the response to that is to go back to do user address fault, re acquire the MMAP read lock, and then try it again with GFP kernel instead of GFP no wait. Right. So that's going to force you into the reclaim path unless somebody else did the work for you first. Oh, then you wouldn't have to update. You wouldn't have to add a GFP flag, right, if you just go to the slow path if there's no PMD yet. Like, don't even try to allocate it in the fast path, not even with no wait. Just don't. Oh, if don't it's there, you do the fast path. If oh. not, then you fall back. And mostly it's going to be there. 
Hmm. That's less code to touch. But that, 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 that's, that's really interesting. We, we, should, we should try that. OK. All right, thanks. Yeah, so um, I don't know where we're going from here. The, uh, <laughs> Lime, if I can have a question um, to Paul, actually. Uh, so if um, we have that, that whole thing in, in a RCU, uh, what would or what could actually happen if uh, the reclaim or any part of, of that path just depends on RCU in some really awkward way because we simply don't know because those are reclaimers that are out of MM hands and uh, so you actually cannot make any assumptions. Is that possible even remotely? Well, so first off, uh, I'll end up giving you like three answers because we have three different things we're talking about. Okay. So the first one was a modified SRCU to be fast enough. In that case, it's a different thing off on the side and so there's no interaction unless you make it be. It's your own RCU you've used. So if you put an interaction there, well, okay, you shot yourself in the foot, right? Uh, which happens, I do that a lot myself, so you know, it'd be, you know, welcome to the club. Uh, the next one is if we um, used a GFP no weight or whatever it was, okay? In that case, you go off in the reclaim, um, it probably has RCU readers. If it does a call RCU, that's fine, it just goes off and that's great. If we're to do a synchronized RCU uh, or a synchronized RCU expedited, that'd be a problem. But if that were to happen, um, uh, LockedUp would yell at you really quickly. Um, so if you were doing that approach, my advice would be to do something to just force reclaim on the path manually. I'm pretty sure you can do that. You're looking as if you can't, which maybe you can't, but if nothing else, just have something else allocate a whole pile of memory and that'll force it, all right? <laughs> this can be done. Um, and if you had did that in a kernel with locked up enabled and you tried to do a synchronized RC or RC read side critical section, it would yell at you. Okay. About uh, assuming it, and your next thing is, well, maybe it happens only sometimes, and yeah, I can only help you so much there, right? In the other case where uh, you aren't doing the allocations and you're doing you know, what Johannes was suggesting, then clearly, uh, you know, you aren't, hopefully that doesn't force a reclaim um, if you don't allocate, but what do I know? Did that, yeah. did that answer things or Yeah, I actually something? yes, because the, the answer is that this could be really dangerous if any of the callbacks that are living outside of the page fold, so they're not under the mm -hmm. direct control of, of, uh, of that code path, um, actually do something that it's uh, synchronizing RCU, which can be uh, so, really so, hard. So for, yeah. so for example, just to give one example, um, in RCU torture, if it were to be doing a callback flood, which has made the reclaim happen, and it gets the the uh, callback from the OOM handler and then says, I'm going to do an RCU barrier. You think that might cause a problem? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, there we have an example for you. <laughs> um, you can worry about other things. I don't want to stop you from worrying. Go ahead and worry about other possibilities while you're at it. Is that, is that, is that fair? Yeah. Okay. So we do have an example where it could be a difficult. The, the barrier and, and the sleepable, is, it's a full barrier, right? In the sleepable RCU? It is, but it would not be hard to make a setup where you could say, give me an SRCU, but the hits and everything. Every time I hear it, they're like, yeah, let's just toss it. Where's, where's the catch box when you need one, you know? Um, okay, so in SRCU as it exists now, yes, okay, there's a full barrier. That has not always been the case. Uh, there was a time a long time ago where there were just three grace periods, three RCU grace periods and an SRCU grace period, which caused trouble, all right? it's possible now to make something kind of in between um, where we don't have memory barriers. Where, where basically, it, it would be possible to have a thing where you say, initialize the SRCU struct and make it be a fast reader one. And that will be some penalty. I don't know exactly what right now off the top of my head on the update we'll side. If you do a grace period, there's something's gonna take longer because. And, and, and I like that because intuitively, like, <laughs> In, intuitively, that's exactly what, what RCU should be. Like, and most users will assume that readers are cheap and writers are expensive. So the way you're, you're, you're proposing um, uh, optimizing um, sleep of RCU, that makes sense for any users because like, hey, readers are gonna be cheap, but at the cost of writers. 
I agree, but any is a strong word. Well. <laughs> All right, so I guess the, the other part of this is um, uh, the VMA handling. Um, and, and in that, in that case, we were thinking that for this, for this to work, um, once you RC read a VMA, it can't somehow change to the point that the address you are interested in no longer is in that VMA. And that basically means instead of uh, resizing VMAs, VMA adjust and split would, would be essentially use new VMAs. So the VMAs would be RCU safe by being RCU freed. So, um, yeah, so that was, that's kind of the other part of this. Uh, I, I don't know if that's, that's a problem for anyone or how, how, yeah. If the VMA has changed like that and now it, the old VMA you looked up at the start of the fold is not current anymore, you still need to detect that at the end of the fold probably before you commit any new mappings to the address space. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so we were thinking about uh, a flag for that uh, in the VMA flags, uh, an inactive. So if you uh, hit a VMA that has an inactive flag, you know there's something happening to that VMA and you keep looping until it's gone. Yeah, basically you, you abort the page work and you try again either is it the same way or with the lock? And, and that um, flag would be, that, that flag on the VMA, I think, would be synchronized by the page table lock. Right, so once you've got the page table lock, you know that you can check that flag and it's going to be valid for the duration of, OK, right. there, there's, there's potentially a lot of, um, oh, no, you, 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 you once, once you have the page table lock, you, you, you can check the flag, because if the flag changes on you while you're holding the lock, right. the person who um, it has, has set that will then take the page table lock and tear down all the mappings. That, that's a bit similar to, to SPF. I mean, I don't know if I want to talk about it right now, but that, there's a lot of similarities. That, it, it, that's good, because that seems like the sensible way to do it to me, so I'm glad that it's also the sensible way to do it to you and to Laurent, so that's... Right. Good. Um, yeah, I mean, do, should, should we compare and contrast our approaches here, or, or do you want to? Yeah, we, we could do that. Um... So the, 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 the way that I see Michelle's um, code is that it, it's, it's sort of, uh, you, you're, yours is perhaps separated in time and ours is separated in space. That, uh, so, so the, SPF version of this is instead of taking the, RC, the MMAP read lock at the top here, you take a sequence count on the struct MM struct. And so any modification to any VMA while you're doing the rest of this will, will be checked right before you do the insertion. And uh, if, if the sequence count has changed, then you know that somebody has changed something somewhere in the MMAP struct. And so that might be the VMA that we have a handle on. And so we abort, we go back to the top and we take the read lock and, and we do the whole thing again, actually protected by a lock. Um, where, whereas what Liam and I are doing is are separating in, in process address space that a, uh, a VMA is, um, you, you, you're, you're the inactive flag per VMA, that there is no sequence lock on the MM struct. It's simply done by checking the VMA that you were looking at to see whether or not it's being killed by a, uh, a, a, an MMAP operation or an MProtect operation or something. So, the, the, I mean, the, you're, you're still going to see false, uh, false retries with our approach. Right, because if somebody's called mProtect on a giant VMA, it's, you know, it would have caused that VMA to be split, and well, now, now you had to replace two, maybe three parts, parts of it with, with, with new VMAs, and so you know, there's, there's going to be unnecessary retries still um, with, with both approaches, uh, but hopefully fewer with, <laughs> with, 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 with our approach. Yeah, I would think that it would be, um Per, being per VMA, it just means that it, it has to hit that, that one area, right? Um, yeah, it's going to be less. 
Yeah, I think there's, there's a few places you have to be careful, not just at the commit at the end. So uh, if you go in handle MM fault, you know, when you go through the existing page tables, you do have to be careful for the page tables not to be yanked from under you. Uh, which can be done with RCU, but always uh, like you know, like uh, clearing uh, interrupts so that you so that you won't uh, have TLV shutdowns, depending on architectures. Uh, so you have to be careful there. There's the place where we take the page table lock on the page table that we find. Same, you have to make sure that that it's still the page table at the in, it's still the page table at the instant where you try to get that log that it hasn't been young from under you, and then yeah, all the way at the end when you're gonna commit your pages, when you already have the page table log, you have to make sure your VMA is still the right VMA for what you want it to do. I think that's that's that will be similar whether we do it to SPF. So in SPF we kind of have the same approach except all of these three places that I mentioned have their own small RCU protected section and we don't care about the whole thing uh, being, being one big RCU block. Uh, but I think that's kind of an implementation detail whether it's we have one big RCU block or like three or four along the page fold. That's kind of a similar idea uh, in, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that, Michelle. Uh, you, you're absolutely right. I forgot to mention that what, one thing that we're definitely going to need with this approach is that page tables get freed um, under RCU protection. That's already the case for some architectures. It's even the case for some x86 configurations, and I forget the details because I looked at it once and I ran away screaming, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, get less scared of that. And Okay, Michael, it turns out there are some things I'm scared of. Uh, and RCU page table feeding is one of them. So I'm kind of hoping somebody else does that, but um, I'll do it if I have to. And uh, David wants, oh, okay. I was going to give David the mic, but I've got one. Thanks. So, I mean, like I had a look at that whole mess and like, I mean, page tables are just horrible. The, the, the thing here is whenever, and I think I mentioned that to the, to the SPF series is we, we don't only need like freeing of the page table under RCU, we have to make sure that also any, let's call it auxiliary data that is clued to the page table gets freed using RCU. For page tables, that is, for example, the page table lock. On some architectures, it's embedded in struct page, on others not. And I think we'll get more into that, that problem domain once we, for example, use some dynamic allocation of like a struct page parts as, as uh, you imagine. Yeah, that's easier. I mean, maybe it's not so buried deep down in some call chain, um, but yeah. We actually have that unresolved issue in the current SPF budget, and that's that really only that's configuration dependent. That's if you have a split PT logs and that you gonna allocate the spin logs instead of just having them in the struct page, and. I think the only configuration, legitimate configuration that triggers that is if you have config RT preempt that will cause your spin locks to be bigger and you're gonna hit that issue. Um, I think also, on, I think on X, uh, if you have 32-bit architectures, I think it might also apply, but I, I, I'm not sure yeah, completely. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure how we want to handle that. We could definitely write the code to also defer the freeing of the split PT logs. Yeah, and that, that, that brings me actually to the point that I was trying to come to is that the way we currently free page tables is a mess. And I think like we should defer that whole deconstructor, like there, there is some, some, something called deconstructor for page tables. We should find a way to defer that to the actual freeing. I have no idea how we would do that, but maybe that goes into the same direction of what you propose. And, I've, I've worked on that code before. I have thought about doing that, and I just didn't see a particular need to do it that way. You have a use case. Let's do it. I, I, I can win that patch up for you in 15 minutes. Let's, let's do it. OK, thanks. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> other, other 
honestly, I, I thought we were going to fight more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What would be a nice conclusion? Um, well, I think the the best the best plan would well first of all maple tree the, the stuff I have out now doesn't conflict with either path forward so that's that's great. Um, uh, if FS reclaim went away, that would be a great conclusion, but I don't think that's going to happen. So <laughs> so we're going to have to figure out allocations in, with in with outside the uh, the lock the IMAP lock um, for certain things. Um, this is still really, this is step two, right? And, and then there's other things that can be done to, to better, to, to go further in, in, our, in our grand scheme of, of the beautiful, sunny, rosy-eyed future. Um, Matthew, you wanna? I mean, there, there's, there's, there's some interesting problems we've been having uh, around um, slab pre-allocation and it's like oh yeah you know, this this is this is so it's the basic problem and, and we have one of the slab maintainers in the room this is fantastic um, we uh, the basic problem is the usual I, I'm, I'm holding a spin lock and I need to allocate memory right and so you know you don't want to go into GFPV claim etc cetera, etc cetera. so what we've been trying to do is pre-allocate at the top and then take the spin lock and, and go through. Um, Which code path are you talking about? The, the, the code paths, the, the, yeah, the co this is updating the maple tree, yeah. Um, or even the, the, perhaps the worst is you know an M protect in the middle of the VMA. So we need to allocate three new VMAs, and we need to allocate uh, three times the height of the maple tree plus one nodes. So we need to get quite a lot of memory pre-allocated to be sure that we won't need to allocate memory at the bottom when we get all the way down to the bottom of the tree and find out that we're in our, our worst case scenario. But of course, that is the worst case scenario, right? When generally we're not going to need it. So what we really want is a very efficient way to have the slab allocator say, from this slab, I want 28 objects. And then a short while later, here's 26 of them back. Mempool, really? Is it, is, oh, oh that, that, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the classic hack. Yeah, I, I hate mempool. <laughs> it's perhaps irrational of me, and perhaps we should just be using mempool. But um, it, I mean, I, I've, I've I, I've gone outside my, my boundaries and I've, I've looked into the slab allocation. It's like, you know, why, why, why not just give us a detached free list? And then we just pop a couple of things off the top of it and, and then hand you back and say, here's your detached free list back. And maybe? <laughs> He's not saying no. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Well, that's, it's, it's not a no. no we, could, we, we could look into this. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'll get Blastermill to do it. <laughs> he's not here, is he? No, he's he's probably watching on the stream. Oh, there you go. <laughs> he's yelling at us on IRC right now. Probably. Yeah, so um, I really expected a lot more on this. Um, I, I don't really have anything else. Uh, did you have anything else? No. Did you want to talk SPF now? Well, I think we're going to start with SPF soon. Yeah. I mean, I want to say in general, I think we agree on the big directions that we want to do lockless things, but it's the details. Like we always, well, first we keep fighting on the details, uh, but also, uh, I mean, whenever we try it, 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 there's always a few things we didn't see coming and so, I mean, I think it's time we get started actually getting stuff in uh, with that because it, we've been talking about it for a long time. I might, I might have a question re regarding that. So w what scared me a bit, scared is the wrong word, but with the SPF series was that it introduced quite some supple lockless versus locked semantics to a lot of page fault 
handling code. That, that scared me a bit. They made the code significantly, in my opinion, harder to read and understand. With the approach that you're proposing, would that also be true, that like we would have similarly complicated page fold handlers, or would it just feel much more natural? Like, the, let's call it that the delta for people that are like know their way around the page fold handlers would be smaller. I think the delta would be smaller. I mean, so th this this is no, oh, sorry, I'm not, not supposed to move away from the podium. Um, so what what I have up on the slide is this this is the state of today, right? Um, what I would change from here is the MMAP read lock would be not taken the first time around. What, 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 if once you return with a fault flag retry, um, we would in fact take the MMAP read lock. So you know it's going to be an if first time round take the RCU read lock, else take the MMAP read lock. So it's, it's not going to be a huge semantic change there. It's, it's a few extra lines of code, but eh. um, depending exactly how we solve the P4D alloc, PLD alloc, PMD alloc thing, you know that's a tiny little bit of extra code there. You will still have to do the little dance of. Uh, while you work the page table tree, check that it doesn't go away from under you. Uh... No, because 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 it's all, it's, it's all under the same RCU section. You you, you you have to care about that because you you have different RCU sections. But I've got one big RCU section, so I I can do all of this stuff speculatively and then check that the VMA hasn't changed at the end. RCU won't be you won't have to clear interrupts for for that. I mean, it's not true today, but sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, but once, once, the, once the page tables are properly being freed by RCU, we won't need to do that stupid interrupt disabling dance. That might also be true for when we acquire the, the page table log, that sort of thing. Uh, I mean, we, we have the same issues in, in like two or three places, and right now I kind of do the little dance every time to make it safe, but... Uh, But uh, so there's going to be a bit of extra code that's not on this slide, where we do the actual insert into the page in, into the page table, and so we'll check the VMA there to, to just to make sure it's not dead. Um, but I see very little change in the file-backed path. Um, but I think about file back stuff because fundamentally I'm a file system guy. I don't think about anonymous memory because I'm not really an MM person. Uh, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm a file system person at heart. I don't just understand these these unnamed pages. They make me uncomfortable. So, Anon is a lot of the same, but it's a lot more likely that you will have to allocate a page. Uh, and then at the end, when you have your page, you kind of have to check you still have the right VMA. Uh, but that's one of the things where it might not be convenient to have the same RCU section because most of the time you may have to allocate a page. Or at least a lot more often than in the file case. I, I, I guess something that's going to change a lot of this for both fileback and anonymous is using larger pages. Um, once once we start deciding to allocate even like order four pages for both files and anonymous, um, we're, we're, we're going to see like PMD alloc be needed many times more often. Um, and I, th I think that's going to change the whole cost benefit analysis. But or if it doesn't, it wasn't worth doing. <laughs> I think of having one single RCU section or several, I don't think it's such a big deal. We could always, you know, terminate the RCU section, allocate pages, whatever, get, start the next RCU section, check if the VMA is still, uh, you know, not expired, whatever the expired bit is called. 
you, you, you can because you've got the C clock and the and you know the MMAP stem hasn't gone away. We can't because the VMA may have gone away. So when if if we drop the MMAP, if we drop the RCU lock, we have to relook. We have to recall find VMA. Now it's in a maple tree rather than an RB tree, so it's going to be quicker to find, and that may not be a huge performance penalty to do that. But it, it does mean that I do want to see us at least try to allocate um, a PMD page before we give up and say, oh, we'll just drop the lock and, and, and try again. Yeah, that, that works with, so the way I do that in uh, SPF is that I actually make a copy of the VMA originally, you know, when I get the VMA. And, uh, and then I can do my check using the, the sequence counter. I have a sequence counter that's uh, updated by any byte. But that won't work with you and with uh, looking at this uh, expired VMA bit. Um, I don't know. Well, that means you're pre-allocating though too, right? You're, you're making a VMA copy. <laughs> But he, no, he's pretty, he's pretty 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 stack. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's make sure it doesn't get too big. There's also VMAs have the proto. You guess you don't check the proto, proto the piece that the VMAs have allocations in the VMA itself, right? So if there's anything you need to check in there, don't, don't check it. I guess. Uh, there's a piece of the VMA. In the VMA, what is the name? The I don't remember the part that gets cloned. When when you clone a VMA, there's certain things that get allocated besides. Oh, no, no, no. I, I just copied the. VMA. Just just the start and end. The reference yeah, the reference structure. Okay, okay. So don't use them. Don't use them yet. Yeah, w one thing that I would like to ask us, um, and we have uh, discussed that two years ago, and probably. Uh, more in the past uh, is that um, uh, with uh, Maple Tree, do you think that it's still worth to consider uh, the range locking path or just moving straight way to uh, RCU uh, is the essentially only reasonable choice? Because uh, as I read, uh, the Maple Tree um, kind of guarantees that you get maybe just uh, getting the lookup to be. RCU aware and do the rest by the range locking that would be tied to the VMA that it's already, uh, we have a less data structure to, to look at and, and probably that might help a lot without too much subtlety. So you what want you to do the range locking with the maple tree as like a half step to RCU lookups? Right, because that would, that can turn out to be uh, a that might show up a good performance uh, improvements already because you rarely do page faults from different threads on the same VMA. So, um, and I mean, RB3 was terrible for uh, that kind of thing because you have to do all the rotations when, when you manipulate stuff, but this should just make it so much easier. So have you considered that or it's just a dead end and yeah, so I was looking at that and I was actually looking at because we do, it's a range tree, you could potentially have a lock per node, but it just takes up too much space uh, in the node to do that. Uh, and then we started looking at just locking on ranges and, it, and it, it, it's a lot of complexity uh, only to turn around and throw out. So I'm not sure if, if you buy much by just doing the half step. That, that's, that's my opinion anyways. So one, one of the approaches that we've explored but not written code for is that we could put a, um, essentially a, 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 a read-write SEM into the VMA and then uh, each, uh, I've, 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 I've forgotten all the details of this because I thought about this, you know, a year ago, and, and then I went off to work on folios. Um, <laughs> so uh, when, 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 when we look up the VMA, we're using the entire VMA as the range lock, essentially. Yeah, that, that, that's what I have in mind. Um, and so you would still have contention on the VMA as, as, you, um, um, as, as, as you acquire the read-write SAM for read. 
Um, but then you have the read, you, 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 you can then drop the RCU read lock at various different points because you've got the VMA for read. And, right, and, right. You, and you, know it's, you know it's not dead. Um, so, you know, that, that, that actually solves a bunch of problems, but it does then create contention on that one VMA. The, this, the, what, what, I've, what I've been describing is the, the rightless path or at least uh, we're not writing to the, the VMA struct. We're, we're, we're writing to the page tables, sure, but I mean, that's kind of the point of a page fault is that you write to the page tables. It, it is, it, this is, this is this, what I've been describing as a rightless path. And yeah, there is definitely a version of this which is, a, w w which is lockless until you get to the VMA. And we could absolutely do that. And, and you know, I'm, I'm perfectly happy for us to iterate towards an, an end goal. Um, if, if the community at large is willing to go through all these locking changes <laughs> over and over again. Um, and, and, you know, may, maybe we'd never get to, to, the, to the, the rightless stage that I've, I've been describing because it would just be good enough be, to be RCU. But I, I, think there's, I think there's applications that have these giant VMAs, like terabyte size VMAs that are going to say, well, Thanks, but you haven't solved my problem. Yeah, and that might be a good push for uh, later work for you, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was just going for the 10 out of 10 gold star problem. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go for the 8 out of 10 uh, solution first if, 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 if people want that, just recognizing that it will be more disruptive eventually. Over the long term. Over, yeah. yeah. There's anything else? Um, I don't really have anything else. After uh, after VMA sem uh, or semaphore, it would have to mean that a parallel operation has taken place. That VMA could be going away, in which case race is, is uh, it, the fault is racing with the thing just disappearing. So I don't think attention on a VMA semaphore would be as, uh, as, as severe as it is on the MAPSA. Yeah, uh, I... Hey, Mel, great to hear from you. Thank, thanks for, thanks for dialing in. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you, you're right. It's, it's not going to be nearly as bad. Um, I just think that for some workloads, there's going to be some applications that say, you haven't helped me. The, the gamble would be that someone that's creating a very large VMA is likely managing it themselves and they've done it for the express purpose of avoiding MFSEM. So while there would be applications that have terabyte-sized VMAs, chances are they're, ma uh, they're managing their own memory quite explicitly uh, for the express purpose of avoiding uh, any parallel operations, meaning it's also less likely to go to see any contention. There'll be some cache line bouncing acquiring it for read um, but the but the the level of contention that you'd have for a threaded application that is allocating and faulting its own address basis is uh, completely different to what it is on just pinning the uh, VMA itself. Okay, I mean. If, if, if people would, would, would rather that we take that step forward and then only later go to this, if, if that's, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to work on that. How about you, Liam? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was, I was looking at, when I was looking at the range locking, I was looking at locking each individual portion, uh, layer of the tree as we walk down. But if we're just going to RCU read lock and then uh, lock the particular VMA, then yeah, totally. Thanks, everyone. We started already about uh, talking about SPF, and um, there was introduction, so I'll I'll have to cut it short a little bit. So I just want to present the current state of the things uh, 